Hi everybody! I'm Russ. And I'm Keisha. And we're both associate librarians with the National Library Board. Did you know that Russ and I share a common hobby as MOJ scientists? <laughs> That's right. And today, we're going to do a series of science experiments to better explain something that is all around us. Can you guess what it is? Here's a hint. It can be found in a burning candle, a table lamp, or even the sun in our sky. It also helps us to see. Huh. If you guess the word light, that's a bright answer. One important property of light is that it travels in a straight line. It's hard to see this in real life because light constantly surrounds us. But sometimes, particularly on a misty morning, you can see beams of light cut through the air. These beams of light always travel in a straight line, and they are called light rays. Another important thing to note about light is that it can be reflected. Much like a ball, light rays can bounce when they hit a flat surface. So, let's do a science experiment together to prove these two properties of light. That light travels in a straight line, and that light can be reflected. I found an experiment in this book, 40 Simple Science Experiments by Chris Oxlip. This book can be found in the library, but before we head to the library, let's do an experiment together. Shall we begin? For this experiment, you will need two sheets of slightly thick paper. Over here, I am using two sheets of black paper, but any colour could work. You could even recycle old cardboard pieces from a cereal box. Secondly, you'll need a pen. This is to make simple markings on our pieces of paper. Thirdly, a ruler. This will be helpful for us to make straight markings. Next, we will need some blue tack or binder clips. This will be used to hold our pieces of paper upright. Next, we will need a torchlight. If you don't have a torchlight at home, you can ask your parents for permission to use the torchlight on their phones. Next, we will need a pair of scissors. This can be sharp, so please be careful when handling them. And lastly, a small mirror. I'm using a compact mirror which my mother uses for her makeup, but with her permission of course. Thanks mom. If you don't have a small mirror at home, you can easily Find something that's reflective, perhaps some aluminium foil from the kitchen, or even the shiny side of a compact disc. If you don't know what a compact disc is, ask your parents. They probably have one or two lying around the house. Before we begin, here are some important safety tips. Firstly, scissors can be sharp. Ask an adult for help if you're having difficulty cutting the paper, or at any point of this experiment that you might need help with. Secondly, Torchlights can be cool and fun, but the light they emit can really hurt our eyes. You must be careful never to point or shine light directly into your own eyes or anyone else around you. So with that out of the way, let's begin with the experiment. For the first step of this experiment, we will be cutting out slots on our pieces of paper. First, pick up your ruler and pen and measure a 5cm line from the middle of one of our pieces of paper. Then, draw a 2mm line across to get an L shape. Finally, draw another 5cm line to close up the gap. This is the slot that we are going to cut out from our paper. Now, pick up the second piece of paper and line up the two pieces together. Then. Begin to cut out the slot that you have drawn using the pair of scissors. Remember to do this slowly and carefully. And remember, you can always ask a grown-up for help. After you are done, you will get two identical slots cut out from two separate pieces of paper. For the second step, we will require the blue tack. First, remove a small wad of blue tack. 
Then when you are ready, stand one of the cards upright and use the blue tack to fasten it to the table. Do this for the second piece of paper, ensuring that both pieces are lined up parallel to one another. This may take some time and effort, as the blue tack is very sticky. However, patience is key. Take your time with it and just have fun. You should end up with something that looks like this. For the third part of this experiment, switch off the lights or draw the curtains to make the room you are in darker. Then, place the torchlight on one end of your lined up cards and switch it on. What do you see? You should be able to see the light pass through the slots, which creates a straight beam of light, or in other words, a light ray. If you tilt the flashlight left and right, you might notice that the light ray moves in response but remains shining in a straight line. It passes through the first slot, but does not pass through the second slot. This proves that light naturally travels in a straight line. Now let's prove the second property of light that it bounces. Remove the piece of cardboard furthest from the flashlight and replace it with the small mirror. You can prop the mirror up with some blue tack. Now, do the same as before and shine your light through the slit and toward the mirror. What do you see? Whoa! That's right! The light bounces at an angle but remains moving in a straight line. This proves that light can be reflected. Russ, that's really interesting. Mm, I just read a book titled Light Waves by David A. Adler and it taught me that light can bend. Huh, light can bend? But I thought light moves in a straight line. Mm, let me show you through this experiment that I learned. Come, follow me. For this experiment, you will need these items. A piece of paper, a marker of any colour, a clear empty glass, and a cup of water. First, on a piece of paper, use the marker to draw an arrow pointing left. Next, place the piece of paper you just drew on behind the clear glass. Now, slowly pour the cup of water into the clear glass. Watch as the direction of the arrows changes from left to right. The arrow looks like it has changed direction because of something called refraction. Refraction happens when light passes through one transparent thing into another. In this case, the light passes from the air through the glass and water. This is sometimes called the bending of light. So the light bends when it enters the water and then bends again when it leaves the water, which is why the image ends up looking flipped. Wow, Keisha, thanks for showing us that. I didn't know we could bend light. It was my pleasure. There are a lot more fun experiments that can help you learn more about lights in this book. For more interesting facts about science, you can check out these other cool books. If you like things that glow, check out Light It! Creations That Glow, Shine and Blink by Krista Schneider. Curious about how rainbows happen? Check out Let's Make a Rainbow! Seeing the Science of Light with Optical Physics by Chris Ferry. We hope that you have learned more about the properties of lights through the experiments and the books that were shared. Once again, I'm Keisha. And I'm Russ. Thanks for tuning in. Bye. Bye.